Hello, this is Cameron Parsons here. I am a data engineer and formula car instructor with Allenberg Racing Schools. And uh, here I'm going to show you the power of the uh, data acquisition systems that's implemented in our school and race cars and show you a little bit about how this can help you go faster on track. So what we're looking at here is the Motec i2 Pro software. This is a software that we use to take a look at the data that's captured from each of the cars after the uh, track sessions at our racing school. So every Formula Renault is equipped with a variety of sensors that enable us to review and analyze to look over exactly what's going on in the cockpit. It lets us see what the driver is doing, how much steering wheel input they're putting in, how fast they're going, what their throttle position is, how much braking they're using at different points of the track. So this is a screen that we'll be looking at primarily. It's a combination of a couple different spots. So just to take a look here, we can actually have a look at the track in its entirety, thanks to GPS systems. And whenever we want to take a look at something more in depth, we can zoom in and we can pick different points of the track to see what your line is in any corner. This could be hugely helpful because the line is one of the primary things that we want to get nailed down in order to achieve faster lap times. So beyond this, there's also a list of driver inputs you can see here that lists everything else out in, in traces or graphs. So we'll dig into this more in just a second here. When we pull the data off of the cars, we can take a look at a list of every lap from your session and generally we like to pick out your best lap. We'll compare a couple different ones to see where your strengths and weaknesses are. And we can actually compare laps between two different laps, two different drivers, two different sessions, and whatever. So here we'll be comparing two drivers' best laps specifically. And using this data software, we can point out the differences to see where one gains or loses on the other. So our reference driver, our fast driver, is going to be the black car. All the lines and graphs and everything on here is going to be black for that one. And the slower driver is going to show up in red, which is just consistent along all these graphs as well. So what we're looking at here, that GPS track is down in the bottom left corner. And in the graphs, you can see up here is the variance. This graph shows how much our driver is losing or gaining against the reference driver. So when we see these dips in the line, like right here and right here, these show spots where the slower driver especially loses time against the faster driver. So lots of times it's these areas where we can point out where you know, changes need to be made in order to improve flap times. The next graph down, this is the speed. So this is tracked by the GPS sensor on the car, and it shows how fast they're going at any point on the track. This is the throttle position right here, and brake pressure, the line below that, and what gear they're in. So down here, these graphs, or these uh, animations, just help visualize what's going on in the data that's displayed here. We also get g-forces in the bottom right to show what your cornering forces are. So if we were to analyze a lap real quick, this is Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca that we're looking at. Our reference driver achieved a best lap time of a minute 44.5, whereas our slower driver achieved a fast lap of a minute 51.7. So there's definitely some ground to gain, so let's have a look here at where we can uh, earn some more time. So if we come down into turn two, which feels a lot like turn one at Laguna Seca. Turn two is kind of a hairpin corner. It's a real tight one that requires threshold braking in a straight line. And so if we're looking at the differences here, our reference driver takes full throttle on the straightaway into the corner just a little bit longer than the other driver does. As a result, they're also getting onto the brakes just a little bit later. So they're maximizing their time going at their top speed at almost 100 miles an hour down the straightaway. When we look at the brake trace, we can see that the faster driver with the black trace happens to uh, use a, a better technique for braking. What we primarily like to look for is that curve where the line shoots 
almost straight up. It reaches its peak very quickly. It kind of levels out for just a few moments and then they modulate the brake and fade off the brake slowly as they get closer and closer to the corner. When we travel along the trace here, we can see where they get on the brakes at this point. They're working the brakes, working the brakes, maybe dealing with a little bit of lockup, just a little bit. They're trailing off, they're trailing off, and you can see their turning is just barely starting while they're still fading off the brakes to help with that initial car rotation to, to get into the uh, first apex of the corner. So you can compare the lines here where the slower driver, the red car, kind of missed their mark a little bit, went a little wide on the entry, which might feel faster, but they're having to having to really work the wheel through the middle of the corner, slowing them down a little bit, whereas the other driver keeps a tidier, tight line through this section, and then manages to roll on the throttle a little bit smoother and more consistently than the other one. We can see that the other driver is kind of fighting the car a little bit, trying to drive the line that they chose to get through in turn two. So if we take it forward a little bit more, this is approaching turn three. We can see here that the red car did get on the brakes harder, but they also got on the brakes earlier and off the throttle earlier than the black car did. What ended up happening here, if we look at the speed now as a result, they ended up over slowing the corner. If we click here to look at how much they slowed down to enter the corner, we can see the speeds at any given moment where we place this line right here. So at this part of the track, where this line is on the graphs, we can see that the red car is traveling at this point at 59 miles an hour and the black car is traveling at 67 miles an hour. So quite a bit of a difference just by overslowing the corner by what looks to be maybe 10 or 20 feet. And this is where the first dip in the variance starts to really occur. From here on out, that really costs them through the next couple sections. So we can take it forward a little bit. We can see that the black car got on the throttle a tad earlier, which pays off in still about a two and a half to three mile an hour difference throughout the duration of this straightaway. And then now on to turn four. They both got off the throttle at about the same time. They used roughly the same amount of brake pressure entering it. But we can see that the black car got onto the throttle on entry even just before the apex of the corner. They kind of rolled onto it to keep the car smooth and uh, controllable and drivable through this section. But being able to reach full throttle earlier helped keep this car stable, keep some of that weight planted onto the rear tires and help them all the way through and again come out of here with about an eight mile an hour advantage. And that advantage carries on through up until the next turn. You can see the variance line dip down further and further as the red car loses time against the black car. Both of them are pretty evenly matched on their entry into turn five. They get off the throttle, get onto the brakes at roughly the same time, except you can see if you look at the brake trace, the red car carries a little bit too much brake into the corner this time, more than what's necessary. And you can see the difference here in speed, so let's go down to their lowest speed in this section. So, to give you reference where we are, this is turn five, this section of the track right here. Their difference in speed at their slowest point of this turn is nearly 10 miles an hour. And even at that point, the black car carried a higher rolling speed into and through the corner and is now about to get on the throttle earlier than the other car is which is really helpful coming through turn five because you're climbing up a steep hill here so you want to carry as much momentum as possible coming out of there turn six is a scary one for a lot of people it's a high speed turn with a little bit of banking that you really got to take advantage of and put your trust in that it, your wheels, your outside wheels are really going to load up and actually hold the car to the ground a lot better than you'd expect them to. So it's kind of a bravery corner, so we always ask students to build up 
build up to the speed that uh, that we want out of you, but never to go for it all at once. This is one of those corners where you got to try and take it just a couple miles an hour faster at a time, build up your comfort levels as you get faster and faster through here. So this is where another big dip occurs. You can see the variance drop. You can see the difference in speed here. And coming down the graph further, you can see the difference in throttle position. Where the red car comes off the throttle, even applies a little bit of brake, where it turns out you don't really need it, you can see that the black car, the line is still just flat on the very bottom, which means that they did not use any brake. All that they did entering this was lift off the throttle, get back on it, right at this point, which is a little bit uh, before the apex of turn six, which means similar to uh, some of the previous turns, they're rolling back onto the throttle to get the weight shifted back onto the rear end to keep the car from spinning out. It's uh, strange and seems a little counterintuitive to get back on the gas to help the car stay under control, but getting that weight shifted onto the back wheels helps them grip the road and really aids in just uh, keeping the car controllable through some of these high speed corners. Similar to turn five also, you're climbing up another hill coming out of this turn. So the faster you can get through turn six, the more momentum you can carry through there, pays off big time as you're climbing up this hill. You can see that the uh, speed difference maintains you know, between 10 and 15 miles an hour almost all the ways up as they approach the corkscrew, turn seven and seven A. Corkscrew is always a little bit dicey for some people because it crests right at the top of a hill and so trying to do threshold braking in a straight line is really tough through here. You'll see a lot of modulation in the brake pressure because it's it's uh, really hard to try and maintain grip without any lockup going into this. So both cars you can see shoot for that curve, that brake trace that we're looking for with the high initial peak grip or high initial peak brake pressure and a slow fade off as they approach the corner. But you can see some of these squiggly lines show that they're trying to modulate a little bit of lockup, and that's not uncommon going into the corkscrew. Both of them enter it at a pretty decent speed, at a pretty matched speed, roughly 65 miles an hour, slowing down, 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 down to 50, 45 miles an hour. So even though we can see some difference in throttle position here and rolling speed through this corner because the corkscrew is a lot slower than some of the other corners being only about 40 to 45 miles an hour there's not as much time being gained or lost here as opposed to say turn six where they're traveling through at a difference of 20 miles an hour the difference between 67 and 87 so getting corners like this one like turn six Getting that nailed down, the higher speed corner pays off a whole lot more than slower corners like the corkscrew here. So that's always something to pay mind to, is prioritizing what turns pay off most in lap times. So going further down, now into uh, turn 9, this is a tough one too. The car feels like it wants to understeer a whole lot through this section. So it takes a lot of modulation of the throttle usually you don't need to use any brake but sometimes a light brush of the brake will help get the car settled in a little bit better before your turn in to get into nine you can see this is another one of those corners similar to turn six where there can be some big speed differentials through there and having that difference of 10 to 15 miles an hour pays off right in the variance section here so at this point, when we're looking at the variance for comparison, you can see up here, variance is 4.4 seconds. At this point throughout the lap, the red car has lost nearly four and a half seconds on the black car. So if we're looking at just turn nine, the difference in speed through that section up until they're done with that turn, roughly here, they went from a variance of four and a half seconds to five seconds. So when we're comparing these difference of rolling speeds mid-corner, they lost half a second just in that one corner. So if we're able to just fix up one section, that could be the payoff right there. 
Now approaching turn 10, this one's got a lot of banking. This one's similar to turn 5 and 6, where with that banking, you've got to put a lot of trust in the track and the car to work together. And it'll put a lot of weight transferred onto the uh, outside wheels. So you got to put your trust in it. The grip is going to be there, and it's another one of those ones where you got to just build up your comfort and confidence in the car. But the grip will be there a lot more than you expect it to. And so if we compare the two right here, you can see that trust factor is definitely more present in the black cars. They carry through about 15 miles an hour more. And you can see that's another dip in the variance right there. So coming on to the final corner, turn 11. Let me back it up here just a tiny bit. Into braking. So in the brake zone, you can see that the red car kind of modulates the brake a little bit too much. They might be managing lockup, whereas the black car has got a much smoother trace, which means they're able to get the most possible stopping power out of their brakes as is available. They reach their initial, uh, they reach their peak grip really early on like they're supposed to. They fade out as they get closer and closer to the corner. And overall, it just looks like a smoother transition approaching as they start turning in. Using a little bit of trail braking as they enter in, they get the car rotated. And they're able to climb onto the throttle a lot earlier than the red car is. Which again will pay off down the straightaway on the way out. So, general overview of what we uh, generally look for with these. It all comes down to the variance lines that we were mentioning, mentioning earlier. Whenever we see a dip in the variance, we want to see how does the speed relate, how does the throttle position relate, brake pressure, their gearing even, and then down to the line, GPS line, of where they're placing the car at that moment. All the stuff adds together, and that variance is our guide to where time can be lost or gained. So we put all these pieces together and work on it bit by bit, and then we get faster and faster with more seat time and more data analysis, and then we uh, end up producing some pretty fast lap times by the end of the weekend and hopefully help you out to become a better driver.